<coughs> a shrill, piercing tone broke through the haze, forcing Caleb back to consciousness. Though the sound was grating, he made a mental check to ensure that he was still whole before making any effort to move. His senses were clouded, but they were rapidly returning. His previous memor well, memory was of closing a pen, only to receive a short needle in his thumb. Why was he using a stranger's pen? Before he could recall, the tone went silent, allowing him to note that he was most certainly not at his home. The buzzing of staccatos was far too loud. With a groan, he slowly rose. All around him, grotesque stone statues were arranged in what could only be described as an ordered chaos. They were mostly arranged in rows, but many of them had been knocked over. Beyond the statues, he spotted an iron fence, possibly ten feet tall. To his right, a metal case waited. Before he could decide whether it was worth investigating, the tone made him wince, and he lifted a hand to his right ear. His fingers brushed against an earpiece, the source of the sound. Locating a button along its surface, he pressed it. A few seconds of silence followed. Mr. Thornton? The voice was inquisitive, but it lacked any real curiosity. Hesitantly, Caleb replied. Yes. The reply was quick and practiced. Greetings. I'm your handler for this evening. Should you fail the test, I will notify headquarters, and they will subsequently notify your next of kin. In the case, you'll find everything you require. Good luck. Caleb removed the earpiece and inspected it, frowning. He eyed the case once more and replaced the earpiece. <coughs> Come again? The test. Oh. Sound followed. Growing impatient, Caleb knelt and opened the case. Inside, he found a large pistol and a single magazine. Upon arming himself, he rose again and inspected the environment more thoroughly. The gate to the enclosure had a padlock. The road stretched out from the gate, heading into the forest that surrounded him on all sides save one. Instead of a forest, a lengthy field extended toward a hill. The setting sun glinted off of something on the hill. The voice came through the earpiece once again. My apologies. It seems that the sedative administered in a more potent dose than required. And prior to this injection, you consented to joining our organization. This test is to verify that you are qualified for field work. Recollection slowly returning, Caleb nodded his head. His eyes were locked on the top of the hill. And, as my handler, you're basically watching to make sure I do it correctly. Affirmative. There is a creature with you that you must exterminate. If it leaves the enclosure, the test is over. If you perish, the test is over. If you fail, the test is over. The former and latter failures will result in a subsequent test to estimate your ability to function in a different capacity. The other will feature the aforementioned result of condolences to what family you might have. Understood? Eyes now darting about to locate the creature in question, Caleb growled, I can't bathe? Who can? Yes. However, the job of a field agent involves being among the general public. Making them aware of a werewolf walking among them would be problematic. As such, you must be capable of engaging targets without phasing unless otherwise permitted. Sorting, Caleb shook his head. So, you're my leash. Handler, yes. Yeah. As the sun set, Caleb returned his gaze to the hill. And what, exactly, is this target? Oh, wait. What? Before the handler could clarify, a strong impact from behind sent Caleb sprawling to the ground. Rolling to the side before a heavy foot stomped where his torso had just been, Caleb stared at what was now attacking him. A muffled noise came from the earpiece, which had fallen away, but his ears picked up what was said. Staring at the hideous, hulking beast, Caleb watched as the last remnants of stone faded from its flesh. A gargoyle. They put me up against a gargoyle. You've got to be... Before he could finish his statement, the gargoyle plowed an arm into him, sending him tumbling away. As soon as he could right himself, Caleb ducked behind a statue and attempted to collect his wits. Chambering around, he heard the beast stomping its way closer. Once it was close enough, Caleb darted into the open and fired toward the footsteps, only for the gargoyle to no longer be there. What? A loud crash behind him made him leap forward, narrowly missing another blow. 
Starting away from the beast, he scooped up the earpiece before ducking behind another statue. Jamming it onto his ear, he shouted, What is wrong with you people? The gargoyle roared. The statue slammed into the ground two feet away from Caleb's position. Mr. Pointed, I do not understand the query. Perhaps you might be able to clarify. <coughs> Cursing loudly, Caleb bolted for another statue just before the one he had hid behind crumbled under the weight of the beast. A gargoyle? This is your idea of a test? This is not my idea. But it was the order given. The test generally features something smaller, but the commander said that you would be able to handle this. Do be sure to go on the offensive soon. You're running out of places to hide. I know! Before, once again, Caleb bolted away as the statue he'd used for cover was destroyed. Turning to face the gargoyle, he fired twice, both shots hitting his shoulder. The beast roared angrily, then leapt into the air as a pair of wings unfurled from its back. It can fly? A loud shot rang out from the distant hill. The gargoyle shrieked as one of its wings was torn off by the bullet. Not anymore. Mr. Thornton, do not forget that its departure means that you failed its test. Tumbling out of the way as the large beast fell where he had been standing, Caleb retorted, Gee, thanks. I had almost forgotten amid the whole, it's trying to kill me. Rising again, Caleb shot at the base of the other wing. Though the wing was rendered immobile, it remained attached. Is that an attempt at humor, Mr. Thornton? No, I was just... Caleb was cut off once again as the gargoyle had landed a successful blow. The world spun as he sped through the air, then came to an abrupt halt as he slammed into a statue and fell to the ground. That is a shame. I find humor to be amusing. Groaning as he picked himself up, Caleb was about to reply, but another incoming statue gave him pause, and he instead chose to duck out of its way. The gargoyle, now thoroughly enraged, stamped the ground in preparation for a charge. The last statue now having been demolished, he had no choice but to fight back. A stabbing pain in his side as he raised his gun let him know that he'd broken a rib or two and blurred his sight, making it difficult to aim. Gritting his teeth, he fired several times toward the gargoyle. While most of the shots went astray, a few managed to make impact, and the creature collapsed in pain. Breathing heavily, Caleb lowered the gun to lessen the tension in his side. As his vision cleared, he saw the beast had been crippled, its knees having been shattered. Switching the gun to his other hand, he took careful aim and killed the beast. Congratulations, Mr. Thornton. You passed the test. Exhausted, Caleb leaned against the base of one of the destroyed statues and slumped to the ground. Handler? Please, call me Mark. Once again, Caleb placed the gun on the ground. Fine. Mark? Yes? I was being sarcastic.